that we have a miracle like in 2010. And joining us, the esteemed president of the Philadelphia Flyers, the great Keith Jones. Jonesy! I'm starving now after that ad you read on those primo hoagies. That was good, buddy. That was good. I'll send you a bunch. As soon oh, yeah. as you I'm, win I'm... tomorrow night, I'll send you a bunch, all right? <laughs> I, I go there a lot. Don't worry. You don't have to send me anything. I love that. Place. How you doing, buddy? Good, buddy. And, and I first, I, I wanted you to come on today for a couple reasons. One, you know, here we are, the last game of the season, and the game matters. And I think that's a win. I think that kind of talks about this season. Uh, it epitomizes what this season was about, where it's growth and it's rebuilding in the right direction. And I wanted your thoughts on this. Yeah, there's no doubt if you had asked me that before the season started that I would have taken this you know, opportunity based upon where we finished last year and where the expectations were that we would finish this year. The, the difficult part is the slide we had at the most important time of the season, but that's part of the growth of a young team. So uh, was it expected when it arrived? No, but was the great start expected? Probably not. So I think things have kind of evened out as the season has moved along. I'm happy that we rebounded with a couple of strong performances, especially defensively. Uh, gave our goaltender some help and got you know Sam feeling good about his game. That bodes well going into this final chance against the Washington Capitals. Uh, but as a whole, when I look at the you know season from above, there's been a lot of good things that have been accomplished. There's a lot of questions that have been answered. And uh, you know I think we're headed in the right direction, but recognize that we have a lot of work to do. Well, you know, it's interesting because you bring up the, that last slide and, and where games got out of hand. But coming back, against the Rangers, and then against the Devils. And that was a great, two really impressive wins. I, I think that, in my eyes, that really showed me a lot about this team. It showed me a lot about the makeup of some of the young players. Because, look, it, it, like I know everybody said they, you, they ran out of gas, and that's what it certainly looked like. But to respond like that, I, I thought that was important. Yeah, they, they've stepped up at, at so many different times during this year. Like I, I was just looking at some of the you know numbers from the season uh, against Western Conference playoff teams, and and we have we're like nine five and two against the teams that are going to play from the West. And there's some yeah. legitimate Stanley Cup you know, contending teams over there. So there's been moments where we've really done a great job in you know meeting challenges. Uh, doing some really great things to to beat some really good quality hockey teams that have been good for a long time. Uh, those those victories meant a lot to our players, and that's what was so frustrating about losing to some of the teams that you would expect to beat. But when you look at it, our our team is at its best when they play as a team. When they have done you know some really good things while being shorthanded and haven't done a great job with the power play. It's been a, it's been a yeah. problem. So that's where you can you know some of the lesser lights you can you can beat them when your special teams perform at the level that they need to. And that's an area that we have to address during the off season. Uh, we're hoping that you know they can come up with a big goal in the game against Washington on the power play that would go a long way to helping us win that game. But you know, there's certain areas that we have to continue to address, and that's that's one of them. And I do think that uh, that could have helped us get through a time period where we started to slide a little bit. Yeah, I, you know, we go back to <laughs> sniper. Why? Why is it? it? It's unbelievable how hard it is. And you know, man, we've been talking about a sniper in this town for decades. Like, you know, really, like we've been talking about ha bringing in that. That guy, that that pure, unfiltered score, that incredibly, immensely talented sniper, they're just so hard to unearth. They are, and nobody's given them up, right? Like Austin Matthews is a first overall pick. 
He has yep. 16 goals. I mean, that's that's what's going to happen. Like, if you want to go right McKinney, to the bottom. McDavid, yeah, Pasternak, and we're, like, they're all. We're, you know, Pasternak's the one exception. He was in the mid-20s yeah. when he was drafted by Boston. So uh, unearthing a player like Pasternak would be an incredibly uh, great thing. Uh, give the Bruins credit that they found him and what the player that he's turned into. Um, you're looking all the time. You're trying to find him. And so is everybody else at the same time. But there's different ways you can go about doing it. We're not in a position yet where we're buying that type of player in free agency. Um, but we're following them all. And we recognize that that would be something that would make things much easier, especially on the power play, to have that type of talent. But we do have some guys that are kind of growing from within that uh, maybe just aren't there yet, but have the potential to be really good power play performers. Tyson Forrester would be one of those guys. Um, he has the shot. And now it's just about developing uh, chemistry and also bringing in some more talented power play, not specialists, but guys that excel with the, with the man advantage. And uh, I think that's something that we're definitely eyeing and looking for different ways that we can add those type of players. Tippett, uh, obviously, he's got yep. a great touch. Uh, who are like? I'm curious when you assess some of the younger players, and you look at Frost, and you look at Tippett, and uh, Bobby Brink. Like, where, where are you at with some of the young players? Um, you know, I'm curious to see kind of. You, how do you assess with the talent that's here now as if, as far as the, the, to, or its growth and ceiling? Yeah. yeah, Bobby Brink's a player that, you know, should progress as a very good power play player over time. Um, he has proven it at different levels, um, and this has been a good learning experience for him to get some, you know, limited time on the power play, but opportunities. Uh, Morgan Frosch has the talent to excel in the power play, and he said – you know, a really good second half to the season, very similar to last year's. Uh, he dipped at the same time as the team did during that, you know, winless streak. But there's no question he has offensive abilities, and I think he's done a really good job of staying with it. You know, had some tough love early on from Torts and, you know, handled it extremely well and has done a good job in that regard. Uh, Joel Farabee has 22 goals. He has 50 points, and he's still young. So that's another positive that has kind of emerged this year after last year's kind of rocky season based on the fact he had that surgery prior to the year. Uh, did a lot of good work in the offseason. Has to do it again this year. I, I think he dipped a little bit in the latter part of the season. And uh, it's another big offseason for Joel to make sure he continues to get stronger and you know can handle the rigors of an 82-game season as well and continue to be productive. So... Uh, I, I do think there's a lot of good young players that have done a very good job in developing, but still have uh, some upside there, which is awesome. But I also think there's some players out there that can really help you on the power play um, at different points in their career, too. So we, we really have to search and try to find, you know, the Sean Walker type that can come in and the way he did and help the penalty kill as much as he did. And then help solidify the blue line. You need a quarterback, you know. I mean, that's, yeah, the biggest and that's thing not what. Sh yeah, is, and that's is, not what Sean. Yeah, that's not what Sean was. But I'm just speaking in terms of adding a player that a lot of people don't think think about, and then you know, seeing if they can fit in in a different situation. A power play specialist would some be something that does jump to the to the front of my mind, anyway. So, how much did the uh, goalie situation, the Carter Hart situation? hurt i mean obviously sam was uh you know you had to to bleed him because of it uh yeah how how difficult was that to navigate uh, it's not it's not easy you lose a top 10 goaltender in the league there's no question that's gonna hurt but i thought our guys did a great job of just staying with it and continue to play the same way in front of sam as they did with carter and that was kind of the story during the first half of the season um i i think that Sam has done an outstanding job in his first year in this type of position. Um, I'm really happy with him. And I know there was some frustration in himself uh, for the way that he played, but that's what makes me feel so good about where he's headed. He's, he's very smart about where his game is at. And when he plays confidently, he's really good. 
And that's, I think we saw that, but we, we started to make some really confusing decisions defensively in front of them. And I don't think that's easy for a young goaltender to try to navigate through. So uh, now that we're back playing more consistently in front of him, uh, he's played very well in that situation. So I would expect us to be much better defensively next year than we have been in the latter part of the season. Uh, some of that was self-inflicted. We had the, the opportunity to move Sean Walker for a first round pick and we did. And we did recognize that we had some injuries on the back end at the same time with, you know, Drysdale being out at that point, Sealer yeah. uh, missing time, and Ristolainen not coming back this year. So those, those are really tough things to fill, and uh, it kind of caught us a little bit. But uh, I think that was to be expected. What's, what's the plan? This portion of the uh, Anthony Gargano Show brought to you by the Bet Park Sportsbook app, the great Keith Jones, Flyers president Keith Jones with us. Jonesy, uh, what's the plan, by the way, for for Dotov? Uh, you can't take anything from what you saw. He's just an interesting guy, so big. He comes here. He's got no equipment, right? Like you know, you, you gotta, you, you have to develop him. He, by the, I saw the building really kind of come to life. I was there that night, and uh, the built when he came in, the the uh, the building went wow. What's the plan for him? And what do you see? Like, what's his? What's, yeah, no, there's a, there's a, as? yeah, there's a ton of upside. Um, I think he's been a little irritated and frustrated because of the equipment situation. You're talking about a, you know, a mammoth man that's six foot seven and trying to, you know, find gear that's ready for him. And it's it's been a challenge. There's no doubt. And uh, so that's been a bit of adjustment for him. He hasn't been comfortable yet. Um, Luckily, Sam has kind of righted the ship and done a great job to get us to game 82. Uh, but I do think he has a, a really bright future here once he gets settled in. Uh, he'll be around this summer as well and continue to, you know, progress and get more comfortable in his, his gear and his surroundings. And, you know, there's a, been a lot of change that have happened in a short period of time. So we asked a lot of him. Uh, he did get us an important point against the Islanders, and maybe that point matters. Too. So, um, he's, I, I believe that we'll get something done with him, and that he'll stay. And I look forward to watching him kind of get used to the North American style of play, and also get used to all the other factors that go into coming to a new country and and a new opportunity. So, w- w- let's look at where you're at, and you. Did you? What was this year like for you? I mean, first year president, you and Danny. I mean. You know, take us into your life. It, it, it's been great. Uh, and the fans have been great. The Most importantly, the team has, you know, really shown a lot. I think that gives me, you know, a great feeling going into, you know, the end of this year and then, you know, the draft coming up. And all. there's a lot of exciting things that are happening around our team. But most importantly, it's been – you know, the people that I'm working with have made it awesome. Danny's the best. He's just a super guy. He's a really smart hockey man. He's re- very well thought out, fun to hang around. You know, we, we have a really good time in doing this job. And Dan Hilferty makes it great at the top. I mean, this is this is a guy that gets it. He's very much uh, a super person to work for. I think anyone who's worked under him would tell you that in, all, in the various – jobs that he has had in our community um he brings people together he's 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 been awesome so that's been great and working loves, with you too. know he loves this team it's that uh, l- listen as you know our family right philadelphia sports family you want the people in charge to love the team as much as you do so that's what i really love about dan yes and that's yeah you want when 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 you lose it sucks like it yeah. it hurts like it's it was and and from my standpoint it's great to feel that again because when you're doing tv obviously i wanted the flyers to do well but i wasn't taking the game home with me right 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 now it just sticks to you like it's like it's it's an amazing feeling actually and it's one that you know you you can see how somebody breaks their hand punching a wall once in a while you know like you're you're, <laughs> yeah. you're mad like it's uh and so are our players which is something that i think is really encouraging as well because you know, that's you want them to care as much as your fans care and as much as you care. 
And uh, that's something that makes me feel really good about our future here. But it's it's the people you work with, I think, that matter the most. The players are, you know, obviously people we work with on a daily basis. And uh, I have a, a lot of affection for the guys that are playing for us and the way that they perform. So uh, it's been fun. It's been a great experience. So the one of the guys, I, and I want to ask you about, is uh, Tortorella. Because Tor- this is a different project for him, right? Like, normally... He's the guy that takes a, a good team and gets them into becoming a great team, right? Like he's the guy that kind of gets you over the top. So this is a different type of challenge for him as the young team. It was interesting. The after the Montreal game, and you know, it was things got out of hand and it's off the heels of Buffalo and Columbus. And I'm thinking, oh man, what's this press conference gonna be like? Right. And in fact, he was the opposite. He was nurturing and really kind of understanding. And I, I thought that was really interesting by Torts. He's had a lot of experience, and he's, he's been around a long time. So he, I, he is uh, remarkable in trying to, you know, keep people on their toes, whether it's uh, his players, the media, you know, the people he works with. He's, he does a really good job of caring. Um, and then sometimes when you care that much, you react and I, I, none of, none of the, you know, reactions are calculated. I think it's just him being in the moment. And I respect that. I, I, I think he cares as much as, you know, the fans care. I, I think that comes across in the way that he does things. Um, I think he's an outstanding coach. I think, as I said, prior to this year, I think talking to you that, uh, he's the perfect coach for this team at this time. And that's going to continue. Um, you know, he'll he'll be back doing this again next year, and our players will be, you know, ready for training camp because they know what to expect. It'll be their third year with Torts, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that all unfolds. There's been a lot of players that have progressed uh, with him, some younger players that I think there was some doubts that Torts could be that type of coach, but he's proven that he can do that, and uh, and. And I look over the entire body of work of this year. Um, I feel really good about the things that he has accomplished. And I'm, I'm happy for him that the teams bounced back here and played, you know, a couple of really strong games in a row. And I hope that they, you know, continue that against Washington in the last game. Well, I, I got to tell you, and that's why I wanted you on today, because it, the fact that tomorrow night matters and it is is wonderful. It's it surpasses everybody's expectation, and again, I, the arrow's up, and you're building it the, the right way. So I just wanted to congratulate you on a fun season. We'll be doing this again, but I, I just, I'm really excited for you, and who knows? You never know. Maybe we get lucky, and it's a 2010 piece, and we get in. I, I worked that uh, game 82 up in the up in the booth, and uh, <laughs> who knew Brian Boucher would beat Henrik Lundqvist in a, in a shootout? Uh, so you Remember, never know that they were if that can happen anything. that year too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we, yeah, hey, you just keep going until you don't go any can you, <laughs> to, until they won't let you go any further. So we, let's let's see what happens. I like it. I like it. Listen, great stuff, my brother. I wish you lots and lots of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ant. Take care. There Bye-bye. he is, Flyers President Keith Jones. <laughs> Check it in, and uh, that's fantastic.